Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today we're going to be talking about a new line of guitars from Fender Japan. They're bringing back the International Color Series. I'm going to talk about some of the specs about them, what you can expect as far as price and things like that, and also just give my thoughts about all these nostalgia berries that companies like Fender and others seem to be tapping into. Now, in case you're not familiar with the International Color Series, not much to it. They are basically late 70s strats that had the big old headstock with the truss rod adjustment right here at the top, and it also had the micro tilt instead of the traditional four bolt here, so you can adjust it right here with a little Allen key that would go inside. Now, they've since abandoned that, and in case you're curious why the truss rod did move up to the top of the guitar in the 70s, it's because of the micro tilt. People were having a hard time trying to adjust it from the bottom of the neck here, given the fact that there was a little metal plate that had to be at the back base of this neck in order for the micro tilt to work and work properly. So Leo Fender and the team decided to just move it up here. And that is the story of how that happened. But the thing that made these guitars very highly sought after were the colors and the fact that they were very limited in the number that were produced. You had Capri Orange, which has become a staple in the player line of guitars from Fender Mexico. You had the original Miami Blue, which is Maui Blue, very similar shade, that's why I say that. A Morocco Red, a Sahara Tuape, and also a Monaco Yellow. Now there were other colors that were on the originals that didn't make it into this line of reissues for Fender Japan. Those being Arctic White, Cathay Ebony, as well as a few different bursts. Although on the Telecaster, the modern one, I think that comes with the Sienna Sunburst. However, as far as the specifications of the new line versus the originals, they're a bit different and modernized once again, not too different to what they did with these Fender JVs compared to the originals. Seven and a quarter inch radius, gone. Not doing that anymore. It's the modern nine and a half inch radius. You still get a bow nut, which is pretty cool. You still get real rosewood if you want to go with that option over the maple. And then outside of that, you're using basswood for the body. Now, a lot of people say that basswood might not be the best tone wood. And I know some people get really upset when I use the word tone wood. I read your comments. I'm just going to say it anyways. But I think that this is a positive thing because those original International Color Series were extremely heavy guitars. I'm thinking like Les Paul custom status. I've seen a few that were over 10 pounds and for a Strat. That is just crazy pills. But that being said, vintage voiced pickups, five-way selector switch on the Strat, three-way on the Tele, nothing really fancy in that department either. So really, you're paying for the name, you're paying for the nostalgia, and of course, you're paying for the color. And the final thing I want to talk about as far as this new reissue series from Fender Japan has to be the pricing, averaging about 120,000 yen, 950 bucks USD. However, if you live in the United States, these guitars will not be available for purchase unless you import them from Japan, meaning they're over the $800 tax threshold. So you're going to pay an import duty should you decide to purchase one. Just so you know, that's just how things are when you buy internationally. Now. What I want to talk about for the rest of this video is the nostalgia effect and these companies continuing to cash in on it. We see reissues from everything from amps, pedals, guitars, and it's fine. I think it's cool. I don't, I don't hate on it, but when it comes to especially these guitars, this JV has the same problem that I feel the International Series has on it. It's JV in name only. There's more kind of not in common with the originals than there is in common. I mean, the biggest thing that they have going for it is the fact that these were both made in the same country. When it comes to the internationals, those were American made instruments. Now they're being made in Japan. I specs are so widely different. I mean, it is what it is. You're basically paying for the fact that you can't get some of these colors anymore. And I don't think the pricing is bad on this. And if these guitars were available in the United States, I think you'd have a hell of a bargain, especially looking at the competition from Fender Mexico. It's just, it's tough, man. I really wish personally, and I'd like to hear what you guys think about this in the comments down below, that if you're going to be bringing back some of these ones that are legendary as far as the name goes, mainly the JV and the International Colors, so some people, they love those guitars. 
why not just go all the way with it? We have so many options from both Fender Mexico, Fender USA, Fender Indonesia, China, and Japan that offer the modern radius, the modern neck profile, all of those kinds of things are so similar. It just feels like a copy paste, it's just a little bit of aesthetic differences to just say, oh, well, this is why we can charge a little bit more for this, or this is what makes this a different line. And I guess it's not too dissimilar to what Fender has done for years. It just feels like, I don't know, it feels like the effort's not really there for it. And I would really have felt a lot happier with this new series of guitars had they had some of the vintage specs. And that's all I really wanted to hit on today, short and sweet. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about these colors. Let me know what you think about reissuing guitars with completely different specifications from the originals. If you have any interest in this new line from Fender Japan, I love talking about Fender Japan. I feel like they make such good value for the money, especially when you look at how things are going in the market. It's cheaper to get one of those and have real rosewood instead of the Pal Ferro because to me, Pal Ferro just does not hit the same way just looks a little bit off. I know, I'm biased. But until tomorrow, leave a like on the video if you enjoy the content on this channel. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you then. Take it easy, everybody.